Are more people in India getting sick? I'm not talking about the current COVID-19 crisis, but COVID-19 will hopefully pass over time. But even without accounting for COVID-19, can we find out how healthy or unhealthy India really is? What are the major diseases that ail Indians? What kind of facilities are people using to get themselves treated? Do Indians still rely on government hospitals or are they now preferring private sector? To find this, we have to rely on a recently released set of government data that have been brought out by the National Sample Survey Organization or NSSO, which is the central government's premier data crunching body. This is their fourth report on health and it covers a period between July 2017 and June 2018. So this period is much before the COVID-19 outbreak. Now, what does the report really say about India's health? Let us look at the first issue about how frequently is India falling ill? The NSSO survey uses two parameters to answer the question. The first of which being the proportion of persons that responded as falling sick in the past 15 days. So what the surveys really did was they went and they asked people if, people if they had fallen ill in the past 15 days. This is used to get an idea of the population that is unwell at any given point of time. The other is the share of population that is being treated as inpatient during the past 365 days. The survey found out that in 2017 and 18, around 6.8% of the rural population was sick. This is much higher than what NSSO found in 1995-96 or just 20 years ago when only 5.5% of the rural population fell sick. Therefore, there has been more than a 1 percentage point increase in the number of ailing people in villages. Besides the current one, the NSSO around in 1995-96 is the only other health survey that was conducted for an entire year. The subsequent rounds collected data for just six months. What about the number of sick in our cities or the urban population at any given point in time? It was a whooping 9.1%, just shy of 10% or almost one in every 10 people are ill at any given point in time in our cities. And the proportion of urban sick seems to have gone up much higher when compared to 20 years earlier. In 1995-96, only 5.4% of the urban population was sick, meaning that there has been a near 4 percentage point increase in the number of sick in urban areas. This is quite shocking. Now. What about the diseases that are causing such high rates of morbidity in our cities and villages? Infection remains the main reasons for hospitalization. These infections include fever, jaundice, diarrhea, dysentery, among others. In rural areas, infections was the reason for 31.3% of all hospitalization, which is also similar in urban areas where the share was marginally higher at 31.6%. Doctors and health experts have been warning us about lifestyle diseases for a while now and the NSSO captures this in its report. Almost 43% of the OPD or outpatients in urban areas had cardiovascular or heart related problems or they suffered from endocrine disorders. Endocrine disorders include but are not limited to both types of diabetes, thyroid and certain types of cancers. Respiratory problems were also seen in 10.8% of the rural and 9.5% of the urban OPD patients. The report also shows that 2.9% of the total population got hospitalized at any given point in time in the year. In rural areas, the share is 2.6% of the total population and this increases to 3.4% in urban areas. What is of interest here is that private hospitals now have overtaken public hospitals in providing inpatient treatment or where one needs to be admitted. Around 55% of the people who were admitted in private hospitals compared to just 42% population in public hospitals. The remaining 2.7% went to hospitals run by charitable trusts and NGOs. The point here is that even in rural areas, people prefer to get private medical help instead of availing government help. 41.4% of the rural ailing population's first call for treatment was at private clinics, followed by 32.5% who went to a government hospital and 20.8% who went to a private hospital. The data was not too different in urban areas where 
44.3% went to private clinics, 27.3% went to private hospitals and 26% actually knocked the doors of a government hospital. This just goes on to show the bad state of our government hospitals and how unaffordable healthcare really is in the country. Let's look at another aspect which is about childbirth. Where did these birthings take place? Were they inside hospitals and nursing homes or were they done at home? It is encouraging to see that 90% of all births in rural areas took place in hospitals, either private or government run. In urban areas, it was 96%. Government hospitals in rural areas did bulk of the work, carrying out 69% of the deliveries, while it was 48% in urban areas. We know that private hospitals are more expensive than government ones, and now we know that it holds true even for deliveries. In fact, on an average, the cost of delivery was nearly 10 times more in private hospitals when compared to government ones. Let's do a comparison. The average cost of a delivery of a child in a government hospital in the rural areas was around 2,400 rupees. In a private hospital, it was 20,788 rupees. In urban areas, the cost of birthing of a child in a government hospital was 3,106 rupees as compared to 29,105 in a private hospital. What about surgery or C-section procedures? Surgery was done in about 28% of the hospital childbirths in India. In government hospitals, only 17% of the deliveries were done through surgeries. But in private hospitals, more than 55% of the childbirths were done through surgery. Now, if a surgery is done in a private hospital in an urban area, the cost went up to 37,500 as against 5,500 in a government hospital. And remember, these are just expenses paid directly to the hospital and do not include the out-of-pocket expenditures like medicines, diapers and other expenses. Now, there is a lot that this health report talks about, which we will cover in our magazine. But there are just two key messages that I want to point out. One, more people are falling sick in India. And two, to take care of these sick people, we need better but affordable healthcare. Because most people in the country have to break into their savings or take loans to pay for their hospitalizations. Insurance is still not very common and universal. Therefore, as the government's own statistics point out, we need a desperate upgradation of our public healthcare infrastructure.